All right, guys, uh, we're back here with the 850i. I'm uh, gonna do a little walk around and check steering, suspension, brakes, uh, get a full tally of the things that I need to order compared to what the other shop was uh, recommending. Uh, see right here at the beginning, tires are in really good shape. Brakes are like brand new. I already kind of took a peek because I had uh, this wheel off already. Um, I had to fix that fuel leak. Uh, we've got a really rainy weekend. I wanted to get it done so he could maybe just drive it for a couple days if he wanted while we wait for parts. So uh, another thing you might notice, we we're missing a couple of lug studs. I've had to thread chase all of the uh, for all of these uh, lug studs because they're all kind of monkeyed up. Um, one of them is still pretty tight. I was running out of light. I didn't want to force it. So uh, when we come back to this, we'll get that taken care of. Uh, I also believe that these lug studs are too short. They are longer than factory. But if you can see here, he's got not one, but two spacers. This black uh, ring right here between the rim and this spacer is another spacer. Now that's doing two things. One, there's hardly any thread engagement on these lugs. Um, I mean, it's probably got a couple uh, so the wheels are going to fall off, but it's not a ton of engagement. Uh, but it also eats up some of the hub-centric portion of this, uh, the main spacer. So there's not a whole lot holding these wheels on. So I'm glad he's he's going to ditch these and uh, go back to a factory-style wheel. Back brakes. I haven't pulled the wheels, but just looking through, they're, they've got a ton of meat on them as well. Just missing the anti-rattle clips. I can order those up. That's not a big deal. Uh, check the side. I wanted to get the whole car up in the air, but this thing's just so low. It's hard to get jacks under it once it's tilted. Um, so we're going to have to make do. So this guy, this side does have the rattle clip. So I'll, I'll just order a pair of them so we have them. Uh, who knows if it's got the brake pad sensor on it. Uh, I'm not going to pull a wheel today. Um, let's go up to this front. Got a rattle clip on this one. Again, brake pads look really good. Just a light little bit of surface rust on the rotor from it sitting in the rain overnight and we are missing a lug stud here as well um, so i'll make him wear that i'll just do a quick shakedown the steering feels tight i don't feel any weird wobbles doing top and bottom that feels good too uh, so why don't we just go ahead and slide underneath i got a torch under there so we can see and uh we'll go from there Okay, first peak. I saw it with the wheel off, but the front side of this uh, wheel well liner is blown out. This duct area is all trashed. I don't know if he cares about that, but I'll make note of it so he's aware. This side is pretty beat up too. Missing the belly pan. I didn't take that off. So again, I'll make notes. He can do what he'd like to do. We did find a good parts car that we can get some stuff off of, so... All right, looking at the belts. This uh, main drive belt looks pretty good. It's, I don't see any cracks. The AC line is looks like a pretty new belt as well. We've got some oil on the AC compressor. That could be coming down from the valve covers. Uh, the other shop wanted to replace the valve covers, if you remember. Um, but I think we can just get away with some gaskets. Um, let's see, oil pan, lower pan looks really dry. Just a little residue probably from that valve cover leak. The main oil pan is nice and dry. I'm assuming someone put a gasket in it. All right, so the steering linkage looks fairly new, uh, as well as this control arm. So, and that stabilizer link. I bet that control arm is fairly new as well. I mean, it did both sides, so that's good. I mean, you should always do it in pairs anyway, but it's good to see that whoever worked on it did. I'll tell you a couple things that I see that I don't like. Uh, see that brake hose is actually, uh, there should be a grommet that's actually right next to the caliper. That should be up in that little hole on the coilover. So whoever put the coilovers didn't route this stuff wrong. You see that that harness up there for the wheel speed sensor is uh, zip tied, so that's not in there correctly. So we'll have to pop the wheel off at some point and correct that. Um, that's just pure laziness. I mean, guys, this stuff is supposed to be there for a reason. Uh, looks like the dust shield might be actually touching the rotor. Uh, so I'll see if I can kind of bend that back. 
then on this side, I already fixed the grommet on this hose, but the hose is actually twisted, so that caliper actually needs to come off and rotate so that hose isn't kinked. But um, it's hard for me to point, but the hose right here is a bit wet, so that line should be replaced. I'm going to recommend all four hoses. Um, you know, they're probably original and they should get replaced. But again, the steering suspension looks good. This side, I don't know if you can see it, if I can get you in here. That wire hanging down, that's the brake pad wear sensor. So one, it's not in the right spot. Two, there's no sensor. Uh, so we'll get that ordered as well. Again, just laziness uh, from whoever worked on it before, whether it was a shop or from a previous owner, I don't know. Um, the other caliper was missing the little caps for um, the caliper bolts. Uh, not a big deal, but just another one of those things of, you know, being lazy, not putting stuff back that you t took off. So, uh, let's see. Transmission is very wet. I don't think it's coming from the rear main, although it could be. It's hard to really see it looks dry through like this inspection hole so that's why I'm thinking the rear mains probably okay but if we do end up pulling this transmission out we'll put a rear main seal in it that's not a big deal uh, also see right here sorry for all the shaking guys I'm crawling around on the ground uh, this whole harness for the transmission is just hanging down um, again laziness uh, we'll have to figure out that and then there's a right here it's unplugged uh, I'm guessing that it's probably a reverse, reverse light switch because, uh, like I said, the transmission does shift just fine. Just a little delayed engagement off of a start and stop. Uh, the pan's a little damp, nothing too terrible. Transmission mounts, you probably can't see them, but they look new. The engine mounts look new, so we are good there. Uh, it's actually starting to rain again, so I'm going to have to wrap this up and I'll bring you back when we get some clear weather. All right, guys, well, it is a new day. Uh, it's a little bit drier out, but unfortunately it's a little cooler. Uh, we might see 50 or so today, maybe low 50s. Uh, so I'm a little bundled up, but we'll get some work done. Um, last uh, part of the video, we did our look around in the engine compartment underneath the front end. Uh, that pretty much, not big surprises down there. Uh, we do need to get this up in the air and take a look at the back end. There were some bushings back there that, that were bad, and I do have uh, replacement arms to put on. Uh, we're also going to ditch the Funkadelic uh, square tailpipes uh, that are absolutely horrible. Uh, we've picked up uh, an axle back remus system uh, from somebody that was parting out locally. Uh, hopefully that will fit. Uh, not sure entirely. These I think might be bolt together and what he got slipped together so we'll have to check on that once we're underneath uh but before we do that i do want to uh smoke test the intake so for that we're actually going to use uh my ventus smoke machine from auto line pro this thing is absolutely amazing i love using it uh it's very simple you just hook hook it up press the button and she starts right up starts making smoke you can see it already coming out I will shut that down real quick. Uh, so I'll hook that up with the intake adapter. I'm going to pull off uh, the intake boots on both sides, likely the throttle bodies as well. Um, as I said before, this is basically two in-line uh, six cylinders sharing the same crank. Uh, so you've got two throttle bodies, through mat, two mass, uh, two air boxes as well, and basically two DMEs. Uh, so we're going to smoke that because the common place is the... Uh, upper intake gaskets uh, can leak on these. Um, I also do need to eventually pull that off and reseal the valve covers. When we do that, we're going to inspect uh, the lifters. Uh, this does, does have a pretty decent lifter tick, if you remember. Um, if it's not the lifters that's collapsed, uh, it could be the timing chain tensioner, which that's pretty much the whole front of the, the motor is going to come apart to do that. That'll be a, a pretty big job, but We'll get it done if that's what needs be. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and pop these throttle bodies off uh, so I can get the intake adapter right on the manifold. 
We'll smoke it, see if there's any kind of leaks. We'll have to do each side. I'll, I'll bring you along for that. Um, while we have the throttle bodies off, uh, we are gonna go ahead and uh, replace the encoders for, for the throttle bodies. Uh, there's a company, E31 V12 Throttle, that makes new encoders for these. It's somewhat known that uh, they go bad, and when they do, they can cause all kinds of drivability issues, show the bank off, poor throttle response, uh, all of which is I'm kind of feeling with this. Uh, some days it runs pretty decent, other days it just, you know, I have to floor it just to move it in the driveway, um, and it barely moves. So it could be that, but I don't have an EML light, so... Uh, I don't know there for sure. Well, that's off. We'll take a look, see about uh, getting this bracket re-welded back on. Um, I also do have new bumpers for the oil filter housing, if you remember that. That came in. So we got some, some work ahead of us, uh, but I think this video is mostly just going to be the, the walk around type stuff. I will pull those off and smoke test it. We'll do that in this video. Next video, I'll go through rebuilding those uh, encoders. Uh, replacing the encoders and then start some of the other repair work on, on the car uh, there's pretty good laundry list of stuff to do and uh, you know the owner's excited to get the car back he's already got this book for uh, the paint shop first week in january it's currently the week before christmas uh, so we'll get as far as we can without making the car undrivable uh, and we'll go from there and i don't know if you notice if you've been following along you guys see what's missing yeah, the red uh, E30 convertible is gone. Uh, had that picked up over the weekend, sold the rolling shell um, after I got pretty much everything that I needed off of it. He's actually going to make it into a trailer and tow it behind his early E30. So it would be kind of a cool project, and which works out pretty good because it's the whole front half of the car that's bad, and the whole back half is uh, in, in good shape. So if uh, you haven't seen my videos on the E30 Vert, Go ahead and check that out. Uh, there's tons and tons of carnage on that. Um, so yeah, let's uh, go ahead and start getting to work on this. All right, so we've had the change of plans. When you take the uh, throttle body off, there's actually two uh, other ports in the manifold itself that would not seal if I put the uh, intake adapter in there. So instead I've got the intake adapter hooked up here to this intake elbow, uh, it should still smoke past the throttle plate. If it doesn't, what we'll do is so we'll connect to this port here and see what happens. So we're just going to go ahead and get our Ventus here. Turn it on. We should start seeing smoke here in just a second. Yep, here we go. Get that out of our way. Use this port on the intake adapter. Let me just wait. So we'll start seeing uh, smoke if there's a leak. Hopefully we don't. Let's do this trick. My E46 is I like to smoke them long enough that we actually see uh, smoke come out of the oil fill cap. Then you know the crankcase has gotten filled up. Let's see if it works for this. But so far, I don't see any smoke. So that's that's a great sign. Uh, rules that diagnosis out of the vacuum. Good, good, good. I think I'm going to call it that, this side good. Uh, those that, actually, I start seeing it come out of the oil fill cap here it might be hard to see on camera but it is coming out so that means we got this side of the engine pretty well full of smoke obviously it's going to spill on the other side a little bit yeah i'm going to call this side good i'm going to go ahead and put the other boot on the other side we'll smoke that side up too all right so we got our uh, intake adapter hooked up there the ventus is hooked in line let's go ahead and turn our machine on I'll let her fill up with smoke. Uh, one, th one other thing I want to show you guys here. This is the uh, oil fill cap. You see all that milky nastiness on there. So that in of by itself is not something to be alarmed about. A lot of people will see that and think, oh my God, I've got coolant in my oil. You might, but this time of year, as it gets colder, if you're doing lots of short drives, a lot of moisture builds up in the engine and it will just kind of do that to the cap. Now, if you pull your dipstick out and you're seeing lots of that milky crap all over the oil, the whole oil's milkshake, then you probably want to be worried. But if you pull that off in the fall, even the spring, it's kind of start to come up a little bit. You see a little milk on there, that's fine. And this thing really has been kind of 
sitting for quite some time uh, and just moving around yards and whatnot. So I'm not surprised by that by itself. Uh, I do see a little bit of smoke here. Let me get my light. This little uh, flashlight came with the Ventus kit, which is really awesome. So I think it's, looks like it's actually just seeping around. Yeah. Seeping around this intake boot or maybe one of the little hoses underneath it, which we're planning on replacing anyway. Uh, these can be kind of hard and brittle, but I don't know if you can see on the oil fill cap, there's smoke coming out there, so we've got it. Nothing out of the intake gaskets, which is what I was hoping for. Those intake gaskets, they're 212 bucks a piece or something like that. And there's four of them. So we really don't want to uh, replace those if we don't have to. I mean, the owner said it is what it is. If it needs it, do it. But we'll get the, we'll get the actual intakes off, inspect their condition, see if they're dried up and cracked. If they are, we certainly will replace them. I know he put uh, maps on it. I, he might have... I don't think you put throttle bodies on it because some of the Cosmo line, the way it's worn off, matches on the uh, intake itself. So you probably didn't replace those. But that that could have been the intakes could have been off. You might have done those gaskets. You could have done injectors. I mean, I, I just don't know. The owner doesn't remember. Uh, but we do need to take them off to get the valve cover gaskets, anyways. Then inspect those lifters for that that tick. But uh, so far, this is really good news. Uh, Again, love, love this Ventus smoke machine. I've done the $15 DIY ones. They work, but they're clumsy. Uh, this is just, you know, charge it up, plug it in. In fact, I haven't charged this uh, since the summer, and the battery's still great on it. So, haul this good, and we'll go ahead, we'll get the back end of the car up in the air, and we'll take a look underneath. All right, well, we got her up in the air, so we can take a look at some stuff back here. Crawl under a little. Uh, so we got the same coilovers on the back. I forget the brand. Uh, looks like this exhaust. We're, we're going to replace it. Is basically at this weld here. Um, I'm not going to tackle that. I hate doing exhaust. Um, so I'm going to leave that up to the owner take that he's got a guy that likes to uh cut and weld and all that stuff so i'll leave that for him uh but other than that the diff looks really dry see the cv boots look good on that side look okay on that side as well those all look okay so it's hard to get in get you in here um that stuff all looks good. So let's see if I can see. I think these lower arms is what they recommended and possibly an upper arm. I'll have to look to see what, what he gave me. I don't remember offhand, but apparently the bushings are blown out, although I don't really see anything. When I work under this, I'm gonna have to get it up higher because there's just no room to work. Um, this drive shaft here, the CV boot here on the end of the drive shaft, that's what they said sort of slung all the grease out. I mean, it's damp, but I don't really see an issue there. Uh, I wish I could see where the heat shield was rubbing, but I don't really see it from where I'm at. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's loose or hanging down. But, I mean, something's definitely rubbing on it. It doesn't sound too great. So I'm going to have to get this higher up in the air to really take a look at it. See what see what arms they wanted, me, wanted to replace. Other than that, it doesn't look too bad. There's the two fuel filters on the side. I ordered those. I ordered a fuel pump as well. Um, and I also ordered from that same um, E31 V12 throttle website. Um, a diagnostic computer for this. It's custom pretty much for this chassis. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to get this up further in the year. See what parts you gave me and see what we're gonna put on the car. 
All right, so I just wanted to do a little test here. Apologize for the noise. Uh, well, I keep mentioning that when I start this up, it run decent and then just like falls on its face. And uh, it's exactly what it's doing right now. And just as a test, uh, I know I got the air box off, but the math is still in place. That coil is unplugged and that's exactly how it's been running. And it's not running any different with that coil unplugged. So that tells me that that whole side of the, the engine is dead. Now, whether it's a bad coil, a DME issue, I don't know at this this time. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find any diagnostic for that that coil. Um, I could probably swap side to side as well. That that might be something worth doing. But that's definitely what it is. That's this bank is uh, not doing anything. So let me uh, shut it off. I'll restart it with the coil plugged in. You can you can see that. All right, so you can see I've got the coil plugged back in. I mean, obviously the mount is broke. Uh, that needs to get rewelded on. Um, I'll do that. I got to move this brake line out of the way. Or actually, that looks like power steering. Uh, oh, that's right. This has got like a hydro boost type setup. So I'll need to get this out of the way so I can get in there, clean that up, and weld that on. But from what I'm told, it's not grounded through this uh, bracket, so that shouldn't be the problem. But let me go ahead, we'll fire it back up and I'll show you it's running the same crappy way. See right now it's running okay? That, now it's gone. Uh, you see the aisle's pretty low. Um, to shut her off. So, I think that's definitely one of the issues. That's the bank that's shutting off. We'll have to figure out, you know, is that coil dead? I probably can home it out to see if it's within spec. Uh, I don't know how difficult it is to get over here to get that off. Uh, that doesn't look like fun at all. So we might not do that. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not terrible, but I just don't feel like messing with it. But I think uh, at least I got a direction. Tomorrow I'll have that diagnostic software be able to dig into it a little deeper and uh, see what's going on. See if that coil's bad. If there's a DME problem. Is there a fuse somewhere that's bad i mean these i mean i have these covers off but i have seen that this is off i don't know why i don't know if something's missing it doesn't fit for shit but at least you got some direction um i did see which arms that they want replaced or they recommend replace and it's uh the bar here trailing arm and then there's i think it's the lower control arm um that they recommend to replace I'm not gonna get into that today. Uh, it's kind of cold, it's supposed to warm up next two days. I'd rather be on the ground when it's a little warmer. Uh, but I can go ahead and I can start taking, you know, doing some diagnosis under the hood. I think I'm gonna pop those intakes off today, but that'll be in a different video. Uh, you'll also see I got the blower motor out. Uh, I, It's really tough to get it in with the intakes in place, at least with uh, this harness in, in the way. So I figured, you know, why why mess with it? Just let's get all this stuff out of the way. It's coming off anyway, and it'll be really easy to stuff back in there. So I think I'm gonna call this video done for now. And uh, I'll bring you back as we start doing some actual work on this thing. And uh, hopefully we can get her running the way it's supposed to on all 12 instead of just six. <laughs> And there could be other issues too. You know, we'll know tomorrow when we get that scan tool. So again, thanks everybody for watching. I uh, love all the comments, the new subscribers. Uh, again, just gives me ambition to, to keep doing this and provide some content for you. So thanks again, and we will see you in the next one.